Hi, my name is Dirk Horton, and today I'd like to introduce a concept called abacards, and that's to use the 10, these are activities that will use the 10 by 10 abacus. Hey, this is a great way for early learners, and you have choices. I mean, think about this. Let's see, would you rather use flashcards in the beginning and drill and practice and speed tests? Or can you have fun with play patterns, more than one way, visual, kinesthetic, and enhance your algebra thinking? Well, let's let go. These are bits and pieces from various um, abacards, and I have a full set available. You can uh, contact me if you would like. All right. The 10 by 10 abacus. It's very important. Uh, for students to reinforce the obvious, and that is there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the hands and the single row of a 10 by 10 abacus. This is a very important concept. It doesn't have to be worked on, but this is what leads to the kind of patterns without having to count on your fingers. It's, it is really helpful. All right. Typically, uh, when we learn to count to 10 in the beginning, we'd be doing something like this. What we're look, doing is enhancing one row, and we're identifying the numbers that are associated with it. This is something you'd want to get rid of as soon as you can, because there's all kinds of young confusion about this. Like, <clears throat> is the last bead, the tenth bead, or are there ten? And does it represent the whole row? It's, it actually is not a good way to reinforce numbers. But the patterns of counting uh, can be changed to a much richer. Let's show you a good example. All right, this is the way I recommend counting by ten. Remember, you got ten rows of ten. Sorry about the abacus; it doesn't have its highlights for fives, but. Uh, Let's see here. Notice we're beginning, we're learning to associate, okay, the number with the actual number of objects. This is the way it should be practiced in recognizing tens. Tens are associated with a group of objects. And um, there is a difference. Uh, this helps students early on to give up counting by using their fingers and also counting uh, to do addition. So let's have a peek at other reasons why we do this way. For instance, after you've built steps, these are called, you begin to learn what makes a 10, the number of bonds. By the way, the um, abacus can do number of bonds up to 100. And number bonds are probably uh, one of the most important visual and mental skills that a, a student can develop. For it's, this is the beginning of being able to do mental math efficiently. All right, let's just let's, uh, take a look and see what you see what I mean here. This is a, a bit from my um, development of adding by grouping and getting an understanding of doing the, the mental math uh, that benefits us all. Students would be sitting there with their own abacus. They would make a seven and a six. And then when the they press the button, uh, this would occur. Now what you want them to do is to go through these cards and anticipate what's going to happen. Uh, clearly, they... I, I, run into so many kids who will start with a 7 and a count to get up to 13, or they will try to memorize. No need to do either. Just visualize. Don't memorize. If you look at that, you've got two rows of 5. This could be called grouping by 5. And then at 3 is easy to recognize. And adding 10s is really easy, especially the visualization on an abacus. Now, the other way to d deal with um, you know, shows kids the, the pattern has to do with something called give and take. That is, if you 
add a certain number of beads to the left, and you take away the same number of beads, you end up with the same number. Let's take a look at this. Take a look, we have three over there, and we put three over there, and again, what do we have? We have 13. This is powerful. All right, another thought. I've been sort of been toying with a concept called your X-ray mind. This is another way of thinking mental math. And if I take a one way to, a student has fun with this, my youngest students actually, is they hold a, a, a six-sided dice against the head. You give that to a friend and have him hold it there. And you use your X-ray mind to tell what number is against his head. And either practicing with a dice or thinking about the following, what makes seven? If you do this, if this side is a one, guess what? <coughs> the other side is a six. If this side is a two, the other side is a five. If this side is a three, the other side is a four. If this side is a four, the other side is a three. And you get the idea. Students practice with this. And then, are you ready to amaze your friends? Have them put that dice up there, that die up there, and tell them that they, you can see with your mind what's on the other side. All right. That leads to another series. Um, and again, this is really powerful. For instance, after they're practiced knowing they're the single a single row contains ten, you begin to set up situations like this where you actually you can physically cover up an area on your abacus, or you can use this uh, just as an activity. All right. Well, how many of those are under there? Use your X-ray mind, your thinking, to discover what's under there. Well, there's nine. There has to be four, and there has to be five, and then you visualize. You can also do it where you just look at the middle, try to guess what's underneath. This really begins to get students to keep my numbers, actual the things that relate to those numbers, in their head, and then work with them. All right, now I think you get this idea. I've found this to be powerful, interesting. Students really uh, gravitate to this. They like thinking that they can see behind. All right, now, also, you know that this is a single row. You ask students to begin to think of some concepts here. This can be done way early on, of course. You know, we're talking about what is an equation and write an equation for the row. You don't have to spend a lot of time talking about this. Just do it. All right. That is the equation for that row. Or, this is important. And again, we're getting students to realize there's more than one way. Um, that This, again, is a, I see this as a very powerful way of, of, early developing early numeracy. All right, now you can do this. Can you write an equation for the row? Well, let's see. And then, can you guess what that x is? Can you see it with your mind? What will make that equation true? All right, this is my street mathematician approach. I give this at Pybus Market. It's called Professor Pi5 Presents. Math is natural, seeing patterns, solving problems. Math is fun. You can build a six, this fairly significant abacus out of PVC and swim noodles that you get a right color. All right, have a read.
Well, you can pause and read this. Just remember, our job is to build confidence and enthusiasm for learning math. Have a great day.